Well, <laughs> Tua, Tua gave you the real vigor. You came in here and your, your speech was winded <laughs> from the enthusiasm of wanting to talk about what happened on Sunday. I haven't seen that since Marino was pitching to Duper and Clinton in 1986. It was unbelievable. It was a time warp. It was crazy. Tony, Watching let's that. get to, we didn't have room. There were a bunch of people bouncing off each other to give their football opinions yesterday, so there weren't even room for, wasn't even room for Tony's top five football observations. And you'll be happy to know, now we finally have ample time to yes. prepare for this segment. We got the imaging. Yes. Yeah. Right. All right. Oh. Uh, segment here. Before you get to the imaging, just real quick, this will be a funny joke only to the handful of people who remember Sanford and Son. But I read from the Twitter account <laughs> Super 70 Sports that Tom Brady is presently older than the first four seasons of Grady, the ah, best friend of Red Fox no, in it. Sanford nope. and Son. Uh, trust me when I tell you it's funny to only people of a certain age, <laughs> yeah. but Grady was old on television <laughs> at the moment he was on television. Uh. And to think of Tom Brady as older than Grady's first four seasons of Sanford and Son <laughs> seems impossible. I thought you said meant Grady Sizemore. Let's do top five. He had a great five. beard. Let's, Love Grady. Uh, he, he was very old. Let's yeah. do. Uh, Roy appreciated that. No one else. Damn in the, right. No one else in the shipping container has any Sanford and Son knowledge. It's like any time I hear the word camel meal, I'm like, whatever you mean. I don't know what that what that is. <laughs> time now for Tony's top five observations. <laughs> That's not part of the image. <laughs> I Ooh. thought that was it as ah. a joke. Ah. What up, Tony? <laughs> All right, guys, top. This is exciting. Yes. We got the music finally down. Yeah. We got the top five going. Let's start with number five. I legitimately thought that the imaging was just going to be that sound. A, a series of uh, PC error error <laughs> noises. Just, just one at the beginning and let Tony flounder out there by himself with just the sound of his voice. <laughs> the beginning was going to be Clippy asking you what you want to do on Microsoft. RIP, by the way, Clippy. Number five. Hmm. There's something about Cooper Rush. <laughs> no. Wow. Something about him. Wow. There's something about, him. Yeah, right. there's something there about him. something. Come on. Yeah. Michael Zaire, he saw it in person. Yep. There's something about him. Yep. They're going to talk themselves into he's better than Dak Prescott, aren't they? Maybe. Depends on if that defensive line plays the same way. Number four. We need a Marcus Lattimore versus Mike Evans MMA match at the end yes. of the season. We just need it. They fought go. twice already in the last like three years. We just need them. Bare knuckle in the middle of the. We do to Jerry where we could sell tickets. Who do you got? Right in the middle. Who do you got? Mike Evans. Yeah. I, I would like Mike Evans to have to serve that suspension in order to just dilute it a bit, only the next time he has to face Lattimore, because I think he'd prefer it that way anyway. He actually would, yeah. He doesn't want to go up against His that. His are really bad. Number three. This is going to be exciting for everybody in here. Tua has some juice. Yeah. Wow. Juice. A little, a little note. Tua Game juice. manager. To game changer? Question mark. Ooh. Whoa, hello. <laughs> what are you writing Question graphics mark. for first? Take? Question mark. I mean, he's been a game manager so far, and all of a sudden, is he evolving into a game changer? So Ooh. much for That's waiting until week seven. I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Nathaniel can't hack it. Guy ah, stinks. Ah, yeah. I like he what is you did there. so bad. <laughs> it's right. Russell Wilson was eight for twenty-nine or something. I'm like, what is happening here? Anyways. <laughs> And number one, number one, the most impressive thing I saw, Tony's top five for week two. <laughs> Kyler Murray doesn't need to read defenses as long as he can do that. <laughs> he doesn't need to. Right. He doesn't need to. He ran for 25 seconds around, got into that two point conversion, threw a ball to AJ Green. He was sliding down between 17 people. He's amazing. Doesn't need to read defenses. Forget it. Thank you, Tony. I, uh, <laughs> there were so many things that we didn't talk about in the football weekend, Stugatz, because, uh, and I don't know, Cody, do you have any interest outside of the Dolphins? Because when I'm watching last night, you guys tell me if you guys have read or heard a good explanation for how it is the Vikings could look like that and do that to Aaron Rodgers, and then you see the Vikings and Kirk Cousins is terrible in prime time again, and Justin Jefferson, who I don't believe can be covered by anybody, when they throw to Justin Jefferson, he gets one catch, and Slay, Darius Slay, gets gets two interceptions. You explain to me the difference between what the Vikings look like against the Packers 
and what the Vikings look like against the Eagles. You bet Vikings? I took the Vikings, yes. Made the mistake. I didn't realize how bad Kirk Cousins has been in prime time, um, but I did take the Vikings. I can't I can't really explain it other than football. Like, maybe the Vikings just better at home than they are on the road. He's that bad in prime time, but I can't really explain it. Well, he, he was, I think he was 5-17 and 17 in prime time before last year. He did win two in prime time. And Philadelphia was, I was shocked they were only favored by two points. At home. I, I thought Philly was going to win one it's of the... It's because of what Minnesota did to Green Bay. It's because yes. of how they made uh, Aaron Rodgers look. Listen, this league, this seat. I know it seems like we say this every year, maybe this year more so. I want to admit something, and I'm not. I'm embarrassed to say it. After two weeks, my record of, of predicting games is 14-17-1. and one. Mm. Not against the spread overall. I am under 500 just picking games. It's It's ridiculous. Those big four comeback games, I had all three of them before the comebacks. I mean, it's crazy the NFL this year. More so, how, so do, than how does usual. that stat work? The big four comebacks game you had. I, I had all. He was four right for wins. a half. I, I had That's all four wins sad. until the ridiculous comeback. I had the Ravens. Okay, but let's not let's. You uh, had the Browns. Let's acknowledge yeah. <laughs> around here that it's hard, to, uh, obviously, <laughs> to pick correctly these games. Someone explain to me, Dalvin Cook. Explain to me Derrick Henry combining for 42 yards last night. For the two of them, two two running backs that I expect to not be 42 yards of offense. But once that game got away yeah. from Tennessee, there's no more Derrick well, Henry. Well, no, right. the, the Dalvin I mean, Cook one is easier to explain because of the, the shape that that game took. There was a point in the game, in the, in the Bills game, where it was still within – reaching distance for the Titans. Remember, it was 7-7 after a quarter. Derrick Henry actually scored on the first drive. There was a point where I saw the stat line was 11 carries for 13 yards for Derrick Henry. Now, I know Taylor Lewan went down, and the second he went down, that game was over because Tennessee had a game plan going into that to run the ball, control it. They were actually doing all right in the line of scrimmage. He went out. It was game over. Derrick Henry does look different after that foot injury. Remember how explosive he would look on a toss. You would toss to Derrick Henry, and he would get a, a head of steam going, and he was impossible to bring down. He looked so slow coming out of the break compared to what he was. How can it be so fragile, though, that we spend seven years analyzing Ryan Tannehill? The league tells you, can't start. Can only have a backup job. You're going to have to come to Tennessee, and you're going to have to sit behind Mariota. And then all I have to do behind Tannehill, is give him the most overwhelming theme we've ever seen at running back. They're one seed. They look like they'll maul physically anybody in the league. Vrabel makes the decision to play Derrick Henry in a playoff game, and it costs them the game because he's got a plate in his foot and he's not Derrick Henry anymore, and they're not the same team anymore. And look at what Tannehill looked like last night when he's got no Derrick Henry. When you're not giving, when you're trying to artificially put around a guy who's not value at quarterback anymore because he's expensive. A bunch of pieces that hide, protect him, aid him, and it's all as fragile as Derrick Henry's foot in a game that's so violent that whatever assessments we're making now are going to be irrelevant three weeks from now because all over the fields everywhere, the <laughs> halftime reports are a reporter coming in and saying, this person's still in the locker room, this person's got a shoulder, this person's got a knee, this person's got an ankle, and everyone by the end of week seven is going to be crawling on their knees and torsos. Except Brady. Yeah, But yeah. The, the Titans were kind of built around Derrick Henry, and they were just hoping for Derrick Henry to be the outlier that he had been for the four years prior. I mean, they... Everything that you hear about uh, Derrick Henry is how much he ran under Nick Saban. That entering in the NFL, he had a lot of wear on those tires. And yet, he might have put up a Hall of Fame career by age 28. And I'm not even saying he still can't be good. It's just that Derrick Henry that we saw exploding out of the break once getting a toss, that was the fastest guy on the field at six foot three but, in his weight is probably done. How can the construct be so flimsy, though, that Vrabel goes from the one guy in the Belichick camp that can lead and outsmart Belichick on clock management to three games later if you can't hand it, hand it to Henry? You're done as a team. And look, Tannehill's got two interceptions, and you're not going to win anything in that conference with those quarterbacks. It's a window, man. The window, the window closed on them, and they actually had they had a three year window, I think, and that's. And for uh, unless you have these dynastic teams and these quarterbacks that are top level that's that's pretty much what it is